Hey, hey, YouTube, how's everybody doing? Thank you for stopping by. My name is JC. This is the Cuban Redneck DIY channel where we do cooking and grilling on Tuesdays, DIY stuff on Fridays. Welcome back to the garage. This is your first time here. I appreciate you stopping by. I would appreciate you a lot more if you was to like, share, and subscribe. With that said, today's video is about upgrading or coming back to adding more functionalities to our Harbor Freight folding workbench. Uh, last week we added a spindle sander uh, for $50. This is a, an exceptional value. Uh, I'm not a friend of when, but the thing works and uh, I just couldn't be happier. Uh, also, uh, the fact that I, I didn't add a, you know, a, a large tool that would take a lot of footprint or would sit on top of my bench, uh, super happy with that. Uh, the face plate, even if you're not going to put it into the uh, into a workbench, um, I strongly recommend putting a bigger face plate. It uh, it make uh, it makes it a lot more stable. Uh, even if you're using the bracket, it has these brackets to hold it on uh, to clamp it on to, to a workhorse or something like that. Uh, it's it's much much better to use it with a larger face plate, obviously. Uh, so. Today's video is about adding yeah, more functionality to the Harbor Freight uh, folding workbench. And one of the things that I, not gonna say that I need, uh, but I would like to have, is a, is a scroll saw. Um, when you're doing lures and you do some kind of small, uh, you know, uh, type of work, uh, I do have a band saw, I have a jigsaw, but there is a particular type of work that a scroll saw is always uh, required, especially if you're cutting something in the inside that you cannot get the bandsaw blade into it. So what I decided to do is um, one of the things about, one of the biggest issues about jigsaw is uh, the, the how much blade the blade has. So uh, I've had in the past what it's called zero gap uh, uh, blade uh, plate on a face plate. And that improves the functionality of the jigsaw quite a bit. I'm going to take that to another level by not only adding a larger face plate, but incorporating into the Harbor Freight workbench. So check this out. If you watched the last video, that is awesome, and I thank you for that. But please give me 30 seconds to explain how we got here. On the last video, we started by ripping a piece of ebony wood into 3 8 pieces. These pieces got fixed onto the bottom of the Harbor Freight folding workbench with brad nails and glue. I then cut a rough opening about a quarter of an inch smaller than the frame with the jigsaw, and then proceeded to open it up to size with the router and a flush bit. The final step was a half inch deep by a half inch wide rabbit, and that is it. Since we already have a face plate that fits perfectly, I'm going to cut another piece just a little bit bigger, put the two pieces together using mounting tape and make a copy on the router table with the flush bit. The next step was to put boundaries on the bank saw and make three inch deep cuts. That may look a little bit big and it is but I am thinking of adding a high speed cutting tool like this one in the near future. With the two deep cuts done, I freehanded the cross cut with the jigsaw and proceeded to open a quarter of inch deep by half inch wide rabbit with a cordless router. If you are converting your jigsaw to a scroll saw with the intent of having it permanently mounted on a workbench, this is not necessary but this is two tools in one. The clear window will allow me to see what I am cutting when I use the jigsaw as a jigsaw. So after making a quick temp jig on the drill press, I went ahead and drilled and kind of sunk all the holes. With the clear window mounted, it is time to install the jigsaw. 
However, after some consideration, I opted against using the OEM base. Instead, I've decided to build one out of polypropylene scraps. That also means that I'll be giving out the angle cutting feature of the jigsaw. Although it looks taller, a single piece of half inch will do the trick, but I'm concerned about lateral movement when under load. So I've decided to add two lateral boundaries to make sure the jigsaw has no side to side movement. To mount it, I started with a small pilot hole about a quarter of an inch from the edge. I then removed the screw from the center of the clear window and replaced it with a longer one. With the spacer secure, it is just a matter of flipping the scroll saw conversion plate, drilling through, counter sinking, and mounting two more screws. The same goes for the mounting screw holding the jigsaw in place. I drill a small pilot to verify placement, drill, counter sunk, Mounted the jigsaw, and that is it. This is a very affordable and easy to make jigsaw to scroll saw conversion, and one that does not sacrifice the main functionality of the jigsaw, if anything, it enhances it. If you found this jigsaw to scroll saw conversion useful, please leave me a comment. My name is JC, I thank you for watching. Please support this channel by subscribing, liking, and sharing. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. Thank you.